Vince, so I'd like to thank you for the welcome. Uh, I'm 55 years of age. I've been a last dwarf for the last 39 years. Uh, I come from Waterford, which is in the southeast of Ireland. Uh, and for those of you who are, who are bad on geography, if you can imagine. Ireland being a teddy bear sitting with its back to England, we'd live just under its tail, so it's <laughs> quite happily, I, I can assure you. But our industry, uh, it's a traditional industry in, in our region, going back into the early 19th century, uh, there was glassworks and um, big factories in, in Waterford, uh, but they had died off by the start of the 20th century. At the end of the Second World War, uh, around 1948, a Czech emigre named of Karl Bacic came to Waterford, knew the story, knew the potential that was there and set about building a glass industry. Starting off very small, very local, first name terms, everyone shoulder to the wheel, built it into a big organ, a big uh, factory uh, uh, early in the early years in the 50s. Uh, a family called McGraw, a wealthy family, came in with them and uh, uh, funded them. It grew into uh, three big plants in our, in our county, employing uh, three and a half thousand workers, uh, massively successful, but then uh, Things began to change a bit in that the McGrath family grew very big and everyone, everyone wanted our little cut. Uh, so they sold off their shares to the likes of Tony O'Reilly, Morgan Stanley and these groups. Um, in 1986, uh, these people looked at Wedgwood and they thought Wedgwood would be nice in the stable, bringing in Wedgwood. They uh, spent 250 million on buying Wedgwood when their, their nearest rivals, uh, the offer was 150 million, setting a trend that was to bring the company to its knees in terms of debt. Debt that they were borrowing from banks to buy what they called brand names, to have a, a, a large uh, a portfolio of brands and to make money all over the world. Uh, as soon as they spent that money, they realised, of course, that they had to take it back off of us because they, um, they set about with a, with a, a rationalisation programme, looking for 700 redundancies. Uh, good terms, our union done a good job in, in, in relation to terms. We got full pension for people at 50, uh, and the, the redundancy terms were excellent. Uh, but the problem was, everyone wanted, <laughs> wanted the opportunity to get out, and they took a, took a thousand people instead of 750. But with that, they... they we ran into trouble because they let the most experienced people go. Naturally, if you're getting a pension at 50, why would you stay? So they then had to retrain a lot of the younger people and eventually got back up to speed again. But we, uh, we went into 1990 and ended up with a 16 week strike because they attacked our wages, looking for 25% cuts. Now, some people say we lost, some people say we won a bit, but we probably worked out with about a draw uh, at, that, that, at that particular period. But then workers in, in strike, uh, it's very hard for you to get back uh, uh, what you lose in a strike, but the determination of the people at that time was that there's no way we're giving up uh, until eventually uh, the company kind of agreed that we come to a, to a deal uh, at, uh, at that time in August uh, 1990. Um, they went down went into a good period where we, of uh, introducing technology and we had a mini, uh, a mini industrial revolution in our industry in the, because we, we, we worked with the old methods, uh, honeycomb furnaces, uh, working by hand, they introduced some technology to work with, with the uh, traditional methods and again uh, in line with that we had a redundancy program. So this, this moved along all through the 90s and uh, they were pretty successful coming to the millennium. Uh, in the meantime adding their little brands as they went along and borrowed from the bank to do it. But uh, when they got to 2000 they, they discovered a thing called the millennium. The whole world went cracked for the millennium. Uh, at that time, in that year, they turned over something like, uh, the group turned over something like a, 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 a billion euros. Uh, massive profits. The only thing they forgot though is the millennium only comes around once every thousand years. <laughs> but um, we went from there then, when the decline from the millennium came about, they came back looking for more, more redundancies and then to get rid of more people. Uh, by this time, Tony O'Reilly's portfolio was very expensive and they were using the likes of us in Waterford, the likes of the people in Wedgwood, the people in Rosenthal using the, the money that those factories were made to service their debts. Uh, couldn't last. Impossible. Uh, so uh, it, it moved along at that and uh, O'Reilly became very, very vulnerable coming into the last period in negotiations with the union on redundancies, people moving out on terms. Um, the, the deals may not have been as good as 87, but they were still good deals, six weeks in terms of redundancy. Uh, you get out on early retirement at 58. Uh, and, and, and uh, still, still uh, not a bad deal in terms of uh, uh, deals that are going today. Um, but then into the picture steps uh, the Bank of America, uh, lender of last resorts. Uh, 
the, the, they go, O'Reilly had to go to those people because he was finding it very hard to, to uh, fund what he wanted to do. And um, they literally shafted him uh, coming up to Christmas because they, uh, they, a crowd called KPS Capital Partners, uh, a, vulture, a vulture capitalist company, uh, decided that they wanted a bit, of the, a bit of the cake and they looked at it and then examined it and spent some money doing due diligence and all the rest of it. Uh, and they negotiated with O'Reilly over, uh, over uh, the Christmas period and coming up to uh, a couple of days before we went back to work after the Christmas holidays they um, pulled the plug on negotiations and walked out the door uh, sometime in, in, uh, from what I'm told in the mid-morning on the Sunday uh, around the 4th of January um, they walked out the door and half an hour after uh, uh, Bank of Murray walked in with the, with the delight and touche and put the company into receivership now, if I, no one can tell you that they're not working hand in hand, uh, uh, trying to buy brands and make money out of it big time. So that the, the receiver was in, said I'm in for a, in for a month. Uh, wanted to put us on short time, a week on, week off. We wouldn't accept it because uh, we felt very suspicious, and uh, <laughs> with good reason. And uh, uh, we, work, we went, went to work on a three day week. Uh, that went on for the month, and at the end of January, on the Friday, the 29th of January. Uh, our union was beaten in, uh, in, in a local hall, uh, having some discussions on, on, on what our next step was, when we got a phone call that um, the, the, we better act fast because the receiver was, uh, was about to shut the place. Now he had made all sorts of promises to, to, to our committees, saying that uh, does, under no way would he, uh, circumstances would he carry on like that, that they'd look after, the, uh, that, that they'd always be up front with the membership and it's the way we like to do our business. Um, but with that, the shop stewards started to phone around and we got a few fellas like my colleague here, Billy, and a few more of them who are uh, fit people. And uh, they, they had uh, hired thugs on the door to keep us out and the lads removed them. Uh, uh, <laughs> but, uh, they had no problem hiring these people and we've checked some, some uh, car registrations uh, that, that have been around the factory and some of them have criminal records and they're not very nice people. But one of them started crying when the lads went in, so... <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, from that then, we are into the factory, 400 people uh, occupied it immediately, 400, uh, 480 of us sacked on that day. They decided to send around by courier uh, your, letter of, uh, your, your letter of sacking, saying that your job is gone, good boy. Um, now in Waterford there's a history of people uh, in communities, some of the local communities, fighting water rates and they're well used to, to, to uh, people moving in around their estates and uh, they, they, they acted pretty fast because the Bush Telegraph, the word started to go around that there's a grey van uh, delivering notes that they shouldn't be delivering. So it ended up that they eventually uh, cornered them, uh, some people started stoning them and uh, they drove across grass and got away. Uh, they were later apprehended by the guards and told to go home because they might get killed. Uh, but that, that, that's t t t t t funny but it's so serious. Because what's, what's at stake is their livelihoods, uh, the livelihoods of families. They've taken pensions, uh, they've taken people who had already taken their um, uh, redundancy and were owed money. They've said, no, that's gone, you're not getting it, it's all gone. Uh, and, and good luck to you. And we're taking the, the brand, uh, we're shutting the factory, we're going to sell off the assets and we're away to China or wherever. And I have no problem with Chinese workers, don't get me wrong. Uh, Waterford Crystal, as I said, is based in the community. Wedgwood is based in the community. Rosenthal is based in the community. Rosenthal is on the Czech, uh, the border of Germany and the Czech Republic. Wedgwood is in Stoke. Uh, City is much the same size, 50,000 people. Rooted into the community. And these people think they can come along and take that heritage that's there. Throw you onto the scrap heap and walk down the road uh, with, with, your, uh, with your job, your livelihood. It can't, it's just not acceptable. Um, at the moment, our, 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 our people are in negotiations with the company, and we are sitting inside. We're there, there a week and a half now. We're sitting down inside a week and a half. Um, the local community uh, on the Saturday after we, after we um, occupied the place. Saturday night, people started delivering stuff to us: food, uh, mattresses, whatever. Uh, on, on, on Saturday morning, the local bakers turned up with bread, uh, dairy with milk, uh, poultry farmer with eggs. People supplying meat. There's a, actually a restaurant facility, so if you're ever going to have a sitting, make sure you have a restaurant facility uh, within the office, and we're able to use it to, to look after the food. Um, the, um, 
The amount of support we're getting from the local community is just unbelievable. On, on the Saturday evening, 3,000 people turned up outside the factory in the lashing rain. It was a re one of those really bad days. Standing